So in the part one, we discussed about the common clinical features of osteogenesis imperfecta. Next, we are moving on to the discussion of each and every type of osteogenesis imperfecta that is by Silens et al. in 1975. I have already mentioned about this in the part one. So we'll start with the type one osteogenesis imperfecta. It is considered to be the most commonest form of all the types and it is considered as the mildest form right so it is divided now this type 1 has two subtypes in it that is subtype A and subtype B now this subtype A is not having dentinogenesis imperfecta while the subtype B will have dentinogenesis imperfecta it will be most commonly seen in infancy some cases are also seen in neonatal age group or in utero but most common you have to remember that is in fancy you will see blue sclera I have already explained what is blue sclera so blue sclera will be seen you will have fractures which are going to decrease after the age of puberty from infancy till puberty the fractures are going to decrease there will be fragility mild to moderate fragility of the bones then there is kyphoscoliosis what is kyphoscoliosis kyphoscoliosis is combination of kyphosis as well as scoliosis so that is improper curvature of spine that is posterior that is posterior as well as the sideways curvature of spine is improper there is curve in the spine and coronal as well as the sagittal plane i can see that this is my coronal plane and if i bisect myself like this this will be my sagittal plane so in coronal as well as the sagittal plane there is curvature of spine that is known as kyphoscoliosis there is hearing loss easy bruising and short stretcher right so these are the common features or clinical features of type 1 you have to remember subtype a subtype b and these are the clinical features now moving on to the type 2 which is mostly seen in utero there will be extreme bone fragility in this we had mild to moderate bone fragility here we have extreme bone fragility in utero fractures will be seen many child or the many births are seen as stillborn some of the children are stillborn 90 percent of them die before they cross the age of four weeks blue sclera is seen dentinogenesis imperfecta is not present in this subtype d it was present the patient will have small nose or the child will have small nose micrognathia and short trunk right so this is mainly in utrosin and you will have more number of deaths and stillborn in type 2. Next, moving on to the type 3. Now, this type 3 is in utero as well as neonatal. 50% of cases are in utero and 50% are neonatal. There is sclera seen of variable hue. That is variable shades. You will see the color of sclera. There is limb shortening. There will be shortening of limbs, fracture. There will be frontal bossing and some cases of pulmonary hypertension is also seen so this is type 3 which is having main that is 50 percent in utero and 50 percent neonatal with sclera of variable u and pulmonary hypertension now moving on to type 4 now this type 4 is again somewhat similar to type 1 because in the first part part 1 of this topic i had said that type 1 and type 4 are in seen in infancy age right so this is also again common in infant group of people subtype a and subtype b is present same like type 1 in subtype b there will be presence of dentinogenesis imperfecta there will be fractures bowing of legs and limb shortening that's it there will be no blue sclera saying no hearing loss no frontal bossing anything pulmonary hypertension nothing is present only Fractures and bowing of bones and limb shortening is present along with dentinogenesis imperfecta. So these are the four types of osteogenesis imperfecta. Next we will discuss about the oral manifestations of this condition. So next moving on to the oral manifestations of osteogenesis imperfecta. So the oral manifestation starts with the large head size that is due to frontal bossing and temporal Bossing. There will be outward growth of frontal, temporal and also the occipital bone, exaggerated growth, right? So, which will lead to increase in the cases of class 3 malocclusion. Now, what is class 3 malocclusion? In this, there will be the relation of maxilla to mandible is ideal is that maxilla will be slightly in front of 
mandible but in class 3 it will be opposite mandible will come in front along with that you will see anterior cross bite that means the lower teeth are going to be placed forward comparatively to the upper teeth and posterior cross bite this is a opposite relation ideal relation is the buccal cusp will come over here and the tooth will be like this but cross bite mein kya hoga the lower teeth are going to be buccally placed comparatively to the upper teeth so anterior and posterior cross bite with increased cases of class 3 malocclusion this all is due to maxillary hypoplasia there is decreased amount of growth of maxillary bone right so which will create forward growth or which will show that the mandible is more forward than maxilla and actually there is decreased growth of maxilla which is which is showing that the mandible is in overgrowth state right along with that there will be numerous impacted teeth and ectopic teeth are also going to be seen the patients with osteogenesis imperfecta will also have impactions of first and second molar which is a comparatively different or uh, tragic to see from the normal population right so there will be impactions and lastly the most common feature or the most important feature which is to be kept in mind regarding osteogenesis imperfecta is that it also shows some signs of dentinogenesis imperfecta we have already made a video on dentinogenesis imperfecta you guys can watch the video i'll provide the link in the description box so this is the main feature which is kept in mind regarding osteogenesis imperfecta for other features you have to go through the oral examination as well as the radiographic examination then moving on to the radiographic features of osteogenesis imperfecta you will see osteopenia bowing of bones vermian bones that is sutural bones which are seen in children and you will see multiple fractures so there will be decrease osteoblastic activity you will see resorption areas and you will see more of spongy bone right so this is the radiographic feature main is bowing of long bones the long bones are going going to become like a bow curved shape because they can't bear the weight and the bones are already fragile so there will be bowing of bones and fracture most commonly moving on to the histological features so the histological features say that they, they have the bone will have thin cortex along with there will be more of immature spongy bone right and along with that the trabeculae of the bone which are present outside are also delicate which will lead to various numerous amount of micro fractures right so, so regarding the osteoblastic activity in the histological part it is decrease so due to this only there is more fragility of bones and porosity is seen in the bones which is leading to number of fractures one more thing is that there is mutation in the type 1 collagen which is not allowing the normal or the fetal matrix the organic matrix of the bone to develop into a mature matrix right so that is also a reason so osteoblastic activity in total is decreased which will have both qualitative as well as the quantitative defects now the qualitative defects are in regards to the quality of bone that is it is porous and it is not in proper matured state next is quantitative there is decreased deposition of bone so this all is leading to the condition osteogenesis imperfecta regarding the treatment there is not much or there is no specific treatment for osteogenesis imperfecta you can just carry on the Uh, regular uh, procedures which are to be done any infections are there then you could treat that but no exact treatment is there for osteogenesis imperfecta uh, regarding the life expectancy of this condition so in the type 1 form of this condition we saw that there is not much of involvement so the patient is going to live according to the general population but in other types like type 2 there is in utero fractures and the babies are still born or they die before 4 weeks of age so the life expectancy decreases in the way other types like type 2 3 and 4 but in type 1 you can expect some life expectancy so this was all i today is wish monday who way let's talk about oi what is oi oi means osteogenesis imperfecta which means my bones are so It can break very easily. It is so bad when I break my bone. When I break my bone, my family comes and wipes it so that it doesn't break more. Please, family and friends, please who have other conditions, please don't give up. Shh.
try, try, and try again until you win. And please support OIF Ghana to support all OIs in Ghana. Thank you. Bye bye. About osteogenesis imperfecta. If you guys enjoyed the video, then please like, share, and subscribe our channel. And if you have any doubt regarding this topic or any other topic, then please let us know in the comment section. And soon we are going to reach our 4,000 subscribers, and we have an event going on on our Instagram page. That is the first one who shares the video of our channel or tags four of their friends are going to. So all is going to be everything is going to be in four. Any four people will be selected and will try to post their videos, their requested videos in the span of four days. So please check out that also. Check out our Instagram page and tag your friends so that they can also enjoy such interesting videos. Thank you.